All right, next is trading for a prop firm. So this is gonna be a little bit, um, probably more closer to managing money, where in a way, you're managing money for others, um, but you're not doing it as hands-on. It's, it's What a prop firm is, is basically, so here would be an example of a prop firm. Let's say me, OG, Darren, Charles, Jason, we all got together and we all put a big bulk of money together and we say, hey, this is we're gonna start a prop firm, right? When Max comes in or Drew comes in and they're traders for the prop firm, what they do is they have permission to trade our money. So it's like managing money for others, but instead of a specific individual client, you're managing you're managing the firm's money. Does that make sense? Okay. And what you typically get off that is some type of split. So you get you get the ability to trade a certain amount of capital. What you produce off that capital, same thing. Hey, you keep 50% of whatever you return off that capital. So it's, a, it's the same thing, but instead of looking at an individual client and trading their money, you're trading the firm's money. Um, we talk about this a lot whenever we talk about um, really growing your own trading account. It's performance-based, performance and time-based. So the better you do, the more capital we allow you to trade. So if we were to have a prop firm and let's say Max comes in, Max gets the ability to trade $10,000 at first because Max is this rookie trader. He's never traded live money before. We don't really trust him. So we just throw him 10,000 as kind of like a feeler and say, okay, Max, show me what you got. What are you gonna do with this, Max? Let's say Max performs good. He's got two successful quarters. He's doing well, return is nice, drawdown is low. We say, hey, you know what, Max? You know, we're gonna give you a raise, right? We're gonna give you the ability to trade twenty thousand dollars, right? That helps Max because now he's getting his fifty percent return off of twenty thousand dollar return instead of that ten thousand dollar return, right? And obviously, as a prop firm, we're making more money because Max is doing well with more of our money, and then eventually Max gets more and more and more. What happens at a lot of prop firms? I don't think you're gonna see this with the the internet based ones, but like the the brick and mortar ones is you get to a certain level um, and you're good over years and years and years, you, you probably get asked to be a partner. Or, or I would say that before that, you, you, you would typically get have the ability to trade your own money with the prop firm's money. So you, now, you can now put your own money into the pot a little bit and, and, and trade your own cash as well and eventually become a partner um, where obviously you start getting a, a cut from the overall profits um, and whatnot. There are a lot of online prop firms. I'm, we had a good discussion on one of my videos a couple, probably about a month ago, actually. Um, I'm not familiar with the good ones. I know a few, few people here at Tier 1 have experimented with a few. Most of what you find online, are they're going to ask for unrealistic expectations. And um, they're going to ask you for a fee to go through their kind of feeler program. So you have to pay them to kind of showcase your skills for a month. Typically, it's going to ask you for some type of weird return where it's like, hey, you've got to return like 50% this month or <laughs> you don't make the cut. Um, and that's just not realistic. So um, there are some out there, again, apologies, I don't remember the names, but that have more realistic guidelines where it's like, hey, if you can make 10% this month um, in your first 30 days, then, you know, you can be a part of it, whatever like that. Um so that's another option. That is, that is, I think, the best way to take your skill and put it, use it in like a normal, I guess, like a job type of format, if that makes sense. I mean, I guess everything is a job that we mentioned, but this is more of like, you're, this is, you're a professional trader. Um, you're, you're a professional trader. You're, you're, you're clocking into another trading company and you're trading for a living and then you're clocking out. Um, now, with some prop firms, they, re they will retrain you. Um, they have a certain philosophy, they, a certain risk philosophy for uh, a certain trading philosophy. So they may ask you to trade a specific way. They may even teach you a system and say, hey, you have to trade this way. Um, that's just kind of the, the give and the take. Um, I would think this eventually, if you get good at something, the better you get, the more freedom you're allowed to have. Um, but that's certainly that if I would have known about prop firms when I first got started, that's the route I would have taken. I would have tried to take instead of managing money. I just I just wasn't aware of it. I didn't have a good idea of what was available. Um, I didn't know that was an option. But that's that's the first thing I would have done was try to work for a prop firm. 
S and B Capital, they are one. Yeah, S and B Capital is a is a prop firm. Yep. Mike Belfiore is the owner of that. One of the owners of that. Um, did you build your personal account through managing money initially? Yes. Yep. Yep. I didn't. I did not have enough money to trade full, despite my I had a very low standard of living at the time. Um, but yeah, I didn't have enough money to trade full time just off my trading uh, or just off my trading account. Yeah, so I, I needed to start a business. So I was looking for something. So my goal the whole time, well, not the whole time. After after reality hit me that like you weren't going to make a two hundred percent return a year. Um, after that reality hit me, then I started thinking of alternatives, and managing money was the one that stood out for me. It just again, I didn't, I wasn't aware of prop firms. That's certainly in hindsight, I would have loved to do that. I would, I would, I would, I would, there's, I, cause I wanted to be a professional trader. I had no aspirations of coaching, anything like that. Um, I don't necessarily like, I don't like selling people things. I don't like talking to people and, and, and doing meetings where they, they just say no and laugh at you. I don't like that. It's annoying and it's frustrating. And it's demoralizing. Um, prop firm is the, is the route I would have taken. I, 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 I love, you guys haven't noticed this already, right? I don't really like being in the spotlight. You've probably noticed this, um, <laughs> this is why things work so well. Me and Jason are a little bit opposites. He likes the limelight. He likes kind of being in there. I'd just rather kind of float underneath the radar, right? Despite you seeing my face on social media all the time, I really don't like it. I, I would rather just, I would, I would rather just under the radar, work for a prop firm in my own home, um, make my money, right? <laughs> and, and do whatever I want with the rest of my life. That's the way I would love to do it. <laughs> um, it was so awkward. I mean, I had, I had, I, I had experience. I, I, I sold Cutco knives, so I went door to door selling knives to people. Right, the, the black man showing up at your door with some knives. <laughs> Say, hey, can I come in? Right. <laughs> so I got used to kind of awkward experiences like that. Um, uh, but it was, I did not like selling myself to people and. and being like, hey, I was very, very spineless. Hey, you can you give me fifty thousand dollars? Cause uh, you know that wasn't me. Uh, but you had to do it. You you had to break out the comfort zone to get the job done. Um, so it was something that was necessary. And you know you got to go outside your your level of comfort sometimes to to be a winner. Um, yeah, those are some pricey knives. They're really good though. They're actually worth it. Um, the Cutco knives. So I'm, I'm not selling them now, but I, I, I would say this, right? As someone who, I mean, I'm still frugal no matter what, but I would be comfortable buying a, a whatever thousand, what was it, thousand dollar sets, whatever they cost. I'd be comfortable buying a thousand dollar set of those knives. They are quality. They don't break. Lifetime, uh, lifetime guarantee. The handle is full tang, right? So you never have to worry about the, the knife coming apart. Full tang, that means it goes all the way through the handle. Handles are made of, of thermo resin, same things they make bowling balls out of, so essentially indestructible. Gives you a nice sharp cut. Not all the time, every time. Cutco knives. <laughs> Remember, we had a weird, uh, we had a, man, we had a weird meeting, right? We were doing, right? So initially, Cutco pays you, I don't know if they still do this, but they used to pay you per presentation. So, like, I didn't really care about selling these dumb knives. I'm like, look, man, where I'm from, ain't nobody spending no hundred dollars for some knives, man. Like, do you know, like, do you know where I'm doing these presentations at? Because we couldn't, like, cold call. We had to do people we knew. And I'm like, I'm trying to tell the guy. I'm like, look, man, in my area, people aren't spending thousand dollars on knife sets, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> come on. But you got paid for every presentation you, you did. So, like, we just hit up, like, me and my buddy. We would hit up, like, 20 people a day because you get paid, like, $15 per presentation. So, we had some weird ones where some guy, like... He let us in his house, right? And he's, we had an appointment. He's like, yeah, come into my soundproof basement so I can hear you better. And we're like, oh, okay. <laughs> so we're doing this whole presentation. And there's this one, uh, this one knife called the butcher. It's like a, it's a butcher knife. And the joke that, you know, they have this whole thing. We, I loosely stuck to the, the, the script. But there was this whole joke you're supposed to do with the butcher where it's like, hey, you know what? You know what else this knife is good for? You know, you hear that knock at your door at night and you're not sure who it is. This is the one you take with you to the door just in case, ha, 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 right? So this guy, we're doing this presentation. He's just looking at this big knife, right? He's got it in his hand, right? And he's like, 
and you know, the whole thing with the knife is like, yeah, these are sharp knives, right? Um, this one's perfect for Thanksgiving because you can cut through bone, right? You take that turkey, chop, right? Chop the wing right off, boom, serving the family. Look like a man at the dinner table, right? And he's looking at it, he's like, so, cuts through bone, right? He's like, yeah, what type of bone? Like, you know, chicken bone, you know, turkey bone, right? You know, ham bone, whatever. So, ah, so every type of bone. I'm like, yeah, every type of bone. And I'm looking at my, uh, the dude I'm doing it with, I'm like, yeah, we got, like, we got to, because we, we, we did this so many times, we had the whole, you know, it was all scripted, right? I make the joke, my friend comes in and, and does this thing. I'm looking at him, giving him the sign, like, yo, we got to, we got to wrap this up. We're going to jump straight to the end, man. Like, we're going <laughs> to, this guy's here just, like, looking at a knife, like, you know, like a, like a murderer in those movies. He's looking at it, just, like, drooling over, like, huh, like, pondering who he can murder with it. Like, I wonder if he's going to kill these two kids. Um, and I'm looking at my friend, like, got, like look, I'm going to jump straight to the end. Like, we're not going to do any of the sales or anything. We're going to jump straight. We're, no, we're not going to ask for any referrals. Do not ask. Just straight to the end. Straight to the end, man. We got out. He's soundproof basement. No one's going to hear us, man. Uh, and uh, we survived it. Obviously, I'm here now. But, you know, we had to do, that was an awkward one, man. I thought we were going to die today. Um, and by we, I mean my friend because I'm faster than him. So I would have pushed him down and ran. I'll say great things at your funeral. I promise. <laughs> Andre went out like a hero. Fought the man. It's a shame he lost. Uh, but yeah, interesting times. But yeah, prop, prop firm would have been my way, especially if you're someone that's kind of anti-social. You don't like doing that type of stuff, really selling yourself. You don't need to build a brand or anything. You just have to be a good performer. Um, 